a lap zipper and lap zippers are used in all skirts really they're nice actually because you can't really see them you can you've still got your zip but your zip's kind of hidden and the the nice thing about them is they are a really well supported zipper to be fair you don't see many lap zippers these days but a lot of vintage patterns still use lap zippers so for this um tutorial today i'm going to use some sample pieces just some sample pieces that i've got over from christmas really just going to zoom out a bit so in my little kit i've got like i said i've got my two pieces of fabric with showing the center back seam i've got my zipper i've got a marking pen uh we're going to do a little bit of measuring i've got a pattern cutting ruler which is a, a triangle grading ruler these are available on my website and i've also got my little handy dandy pins in like a little vintage uh, a little vintage butter dish i keep mine which is dead cute so the first thing we're going to do i'm just going to move the zip out of the way move the pen out of the way we're going to lay our two pieces right sides down because we're going to start um doing a little bit of marking out and measuring so there they are right side down the zip opening will be here in the middle and what we're going to do is we are going to make ourselves a three centimeter wide seam allowance and the reason i make the the, the seam allowance it's three centimeters it doesn't have to be for you but for this instance, I've made it three centimetres and that is just to accommodate for uh, a good seam allowance to accommodate for, for the zipper. And also to accommodate for the fact that one side of the zipper being the left side, left for lap, is going to slightly overlap. So we mark out our three centimetres. Just like so. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little... A little dot where my three centimeter um, measurement is just there and do the same on the other side just put a little dot there where that's where my three centimeter is and this pen that I'm using is indelible so it will fade after time which is nice so it's a fabric pen So for today's tutorial, what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a line where my three centimetres is. And that's my three centimetre line there. And that's my three centimetre line there. And then what you will do is this line will be folded back, this three centimetre line, what you've made. And you will need to iron that. So I'm going to take this away and I'm going to give it a quick press and come back. So I brought my fabric back. And here it is. Now I do is when I iron it, because there's different ways to iron. Obviously we're not ironing clothing. Um, in this instance we are ironing a flat piece of two-dimensional fabric. That we're going to make into a three-dimensional object. Your three-dimensional being the garment. So when you iron you would iron um, as in a pressing sort of motion. And what I do is I actually put a piece of paper and I iron on the piece of paper. A, because I like to make sure that um, the iron is always clean and anything will go onto the sheet and not onto my fabric. And B, that the paper acts as like... Um, it removes part of the steam, so it helps to set the fabric. It helps to set seams. It helps to set that nice line that we've got there. So I always use like a pressing motion and, and I just press the area. And then I leave the paper on, which is, it works like a, a tailor's clapper. I leave it on until it's, until it's cooled down and then I remove it. And here we go. We've got, this is what we've got. So our next job, we are going to measure 11 centimetres up from the bottom and we're going to make a mark. And that mark will indicate where the zipper where the zipper stop will be located. So, I'm 
I've got my ruler. That's my 11 centimeter line. Just there. And that indicates that's where the zipper's gonna stop. If you don't want to make a mark, you can also just put a pin in. A horizontal pin, just to say, tell yourself this is where the zipper's gonna stop. Because you might be um, adding a zipper into something like silk and you don't want to use this method of making marks. So you would use a pin or you would use tailor's chalk other options like that and then what we're going to do I'm just going to take this out just for one second you can see my marks well you put I don't know if you can see but my mark is there transferred to the inside and for me to um, transfer the mark from the front to the back you just put a pin through And you just add your mark on the inside and that tells you this is where your mark is and you it's the same principle for your skirt you decide where you want the zipper to stop and then you make a mark this is where the zipper is going to stop put your two center back pieces together let's get them together nice So the two seam lines match up. I've got my marker there and I'm going to get the machine out. And what you would do is you would sew from the bottom up to, from the bottom, sorry, back stitch, sew right up to your mark, back stitch to finish. So I'm going to go and get the machine and we'll move over to the sewing machine. So to make sure that my um, fabric stays in place, I have pinned it, and I should have said that earlier to be fair, is that I would pin all the way up on that um, fold line, and then you know you've got your two fold lines together. If you're not sure, just push the pin in, check the other side to make sure they're both together, and then add your pins. For the purpose of our little sample, what I've done is I have just decided to use a, um, a pink fabric, a pink, sorry, a pink thread, just to make sure that you can see the stitches. And the stitch length that I'm gonna go for, because I like a bigger stitch length, I go for like three, which that's set on most industrial machines is a, is a, a size three. So I'm using a domestic today, but sometimes you'll see in my tutorials, I'll use my Jack Industrial Sewing Machine. But like I say, for today, we're using the, uh, we're using the domestic. So make sure that you lift your pins out. I don't, I don't advocate sewing over pins because I've seen the damage that can be caused when you do. Some uh, practitioners will, but in this instance, because I work as a pattern cutter for the fashion industry, we like to uh, think that, par that safety is paramount. So, back stitch, like I said. Oh, this machine's doing like a lock stitching effectively. And then you are sewing up to your 11 centimeter indication line. Remove your pins. I'm just going to reposition the fabric a little bit because it seems to have moved now I've taken the pin out. But I've got my um, fingers here and I've got the machine on a really slow pace because I want to make sure I've got as much maximum control as I can. So I've reached my 11 centimetres and I'm going to back stitch. 
and cut my thread. So you can take your work away from the sewing machine now. I'm going to move the sewing machine out of the way. So this is what our sample looks like. Just going to snip my threads. And what I do is I turn my sample right side up. So this would be your skirt. You're turning it right side up. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to finger press it. Just finger press my centre back seam. That's my mark still there. And I've hit it right on the mark. And then what I do is I spin it round so that I know which is left and right. In the sense of if I've got the opening away from me, I know this is my left, this is my right piece. Being left, lap, the lap should go, the lap, the fold of the fabric should go to the left. So, next what we do is we place our zipper under and I um, push that piece of fabric for, forward just so I've got a little bit of control really. And here's where my cute little pins will come into place. You can see the zipper stop because that's the silver, silver mark there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to line it just past it. And then I line the teeth up at the side of my of the right piece of fab of the right side of the fabric. And in all fairness, if you want to have the zipper stop above, you can have it above. If you want to have it below, you can have it below. It's entirely up to you where you want the zip, whether you want to have the zipper stop there. It just means, it's just really um, a case of you feeling for it when you're going to start sewing. So what we do is we pin the right side down. And if you notice when I'm pinning, I always try to pin flat so that I'm not creating any unnecessary bumps and ridges. So I try to pin as flat as I can. And in this instance, I've only put three in. I didn't need to put any more in. If you want, you can add an extra pin there just at the top. Don't forget the top of the zipper where the zipper tab is. This will, you would start a centimetre in anyway because this is going to be where your waistband is. And most waistbands that we draft for patterns are usually one centimetre or 1.5 centimetres if you're using a commercial pattern. The um, independent designers like myself, all our centimetres are all one centimetre. Vintage patterns are all 1.5 to 2 centimetres. So that would you would take that into account when you are marking out for your zipper allowance. And what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to change feet now. So I had my normal um, foot on the um, sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to a zipper foot because that will make it easier to get close in for this first seam line here that we're going to sew. So basically you're going to, you're gonna um you could start at this end or this end entirely up to you. I might start at this side, back stitch. I'm gonna start a centimeter in, probably where that pin is. Back stitch, so really close to the edge here. I'm um back stitch just past it because I can see my zipper stop there. And use your um zipper foot. It will make it easier for you to get in really close. Or if you've got a one-sided foot, that will make it easier. Or a narrow foot, that will make it easier as well. It's just so that you can get nice and close in without having to worry. I thought it might be worth mentioning the different types of zipper feet. So this one, 
and you'll notice when you turn it round and it's got a groove down the center just down the center there this is a concealed zipper foot and the reason it's got the groove is because the zipper teeth sit inside that and the needle goes inside the center and what that basically means is that as it travels down the needle's hitting inside and it means that um because it's because it stitches so close the zipper is totally concealed and you don't see it but then when we make when we use this foot we actually have our fabric a diff, um we actually have our fabric stitched this way on the wrong side and we're going to look at um concealed zippers next so for today we've got this zipper foot I'll just zoom in a little bit. This is the zipper foot we've got. And what that means, we're going to use it on this side. So it's really close. So the little hole, which is just at here, it means that as the needle travels inside that hole, it stitches really close to the edge. So all you will see when this seam is finished is the zipper teeth. But bearing in mind, because this is a lap zipper, the left side will cover it by a couple of millimetres. And what we will create is an L-shape stitch line. And that will give you the lap zipper finish. So to change your feet, it's really easy. There's a little button at the back. Press the button and these are called snap on and snap off feet. Really easy to use. Just, just get my zipper foot. What I do is I put my foot inside the machine then I know where it is and I don't lose it. Line them up. It's got, you can use it at either side because you might be inserting a zipper at either side. I've got the foot raised and what I do is I just line it up to where the bar is, put the foot down, press the bottom and that's it on and I'll just click it off again for you to see it there. There it is off, oops, And there it is, it's on, it's nice and secure. And I'm just gonna move the threads out the way. So like I was saying, I've got the zipper open. I've got the left side of the lap folded down. For the direction that I was gonna start with. Now I'm being cack handed. So it's nicely lined up to the edge. Don't know if you can see that. So it's nicely lined up to the edge. So it's nicely lined up to the edge. I'm just going to pull that needle out. And what I always like to do is I like to just what's called walking it through. So what you're basically doing is you're manually sewing without the electric. And that just tells you this is where you want it to hit. And you know that um, you've got control. You know exactly where the needle's going to hit the fabric. And you know um, the outcome. So I'm, I've walked it through a couple of stitches. I'm just going to back stitch. Remove some pins. And I've just noticed my thread's in the way. I'm just going to lift the foot. I'm still supporting the fabric. And I'm ready to go again.
Remove your pins. Do you know what? I think I should bring back lap zippers. I should make a call for lap zippers. When I um, draft patterns, I need to start adding a lap zipper because I forgot how nice they are and how relaxing they are to do as well. You know, at the moment I'm drafting a lot of jersey patterns for the workshops that I teach down here in Cornwall. But actually, it might be quite nice to um, do some la some classes in woven, making some skirts with a lap zipper. So just to update you on what I'm doing whilst I'm gabbing on, I've moved the um, the pin from here, and I've just put it below below where my stitch is going to finish, just so that I can tell myself this is where my stitch is going to finish. It is below the um, zipper stop, that metal zipper stop there. And it will just help to keep the zip in place, really. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to close the zipper. So my needle's down. I'm just going to raise my needle a little bit, just so I can get the zipper just past it. That's it. And then I can continue sewing. And I'm going nice and slow, I've got loads of control so that I don't have to think, oh, what's happened, you know. I'm in control of the sewing machine, the sewing machine is not in control of me. And when I get to where my pin is, I'm just going to pull the pin out because I know this is, I know this is where my zipper stop is, I can actually see it from the machine. And I know I only need to go a couple of stitches below. And that's me. I'm past my um, my little indication mark. I'm also past the zipper stop. So I'm going to back stitch. And when it's back stitched, cut my threads. And that's my first line. So this, folks, is where it starts to get interesting. I've made my first zipper line. In all fairness, I'll be honest, it doesn't look that neat. However, if it was in the same colour um, fab, if it was in the same colour thread, you wouldn't really be able to see it. So I don't need to overanalyze that. Um, you see it more because it's in pink, and I'm I'm also sewing standing up, which doesn't help. So we're going to create our lap. And what will happen is the left piece of fabric will just slightly come over the right piece. So you won't even really see the stitch line. In this instance, you have seen it a little bit there, but had it have been in the actual colour of the thread, you wouldn't have noticed it. But also it's quite nice as well because it does show you that, um, you know, even as sewing tutors, we can, we can do these tutorials and things don't have to be perfect, but I'm not going to overanalyze it being perfect because I've made a sample. And the whole purpose of me making a sample is just to understand the concept and then I can work on the perfection of the art later on. So it's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so my next job is going to be to... I'm just going to straighten the camera up a bit. We know this is where the lap's going to go. And I'm just going to put a pin, just to really keep it in place for the time being. And what we're going to do is, this is where these rulers come in handy. We are going to mark out where the L shape of our lap will be, which could be anything from one centimetre to one and a half, two centimetres. It's entirely up to you how big you want this distance, this L shape to be. And that just, just shows you there, that's where the L shape is gonna be. So it's entirely up to you. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make mine 1.5 centimeters. So 
measuring from my previous stitch line which is there in pink you can see that it's nice and easy we measure 1 to 1.5 centimeters outwards turn the ruler and then you will make a horizontal line which in this instance I need to um, change rulers really or what you can do when you've got a, a graders ruler like this you just make marks you just measure out keep measuring out your 1.5 centimeters make a dot and then I just follow all the dots all the dotted lines which are there and draw a line and that's the registration line for my 1.5 centimeters there don't forget you've got your zipper underneath so you'll be wondering why there's a little bump and what this is, this is our guideline here for us to follow and trace when we are sewing. So first of all, what we need to do is to put the um, the lap into place. So once again, I'm just going to pin it here at the top. That's it pinned in place there. And then I am going to pin it. So I'm basically pinning it to the zip the other side of the zip I'm going to pin that little bit there because that tells me that's past the stopper the stopper is here so I know when I stitch I am going to sew all the way down I'm going to pivot on this corner here and I will actually back tack just past the stopper you can either back tack past the stopper or before the stopper. It's entirely up to you. Just going to move my zipper out of the way. But I still want to make sure that my fabric's all nicely controlled. And I'm going to remove that pin and what I want to do is just check that this is what's going to happen when the zipper is finished so I know this is how the zipper is going to close I'm just going to um, straighten that pin there and that one there you can also already see that the marker from the pen it's already disappearing so over to the sewing machine. So what I've done now is I've just stopped because I know this this is where the zip is. I need to close the zipper a little bit. Coming up to a pin there as well. Remove that pin. And this is where we're going to pivot to turn the corner. And I've come down far enough so that I know where my zipper stop is. My zipper stop is there, so I know I'm not going to hit my zipper stop. And what I do is I just keep going. Up to the centre back seam, which is this line here. Back stitch. Cut the threads. And what you can do, if you want to reinforce this seam here, you could actually um, make a little bar tack. And the bar tack will just reinforce and stabilise that seam and prevent any stress on that area so the zip won't bust. And then you've done it. You've made your first lap zipper. Look at that. It's great, isn't it? Let's get the machine out of the way and have a little look. Look 
cream. And once you iron it down, it's great. That's your little lap zipper. That's your original stitch. 